Welcome back to my channel, guys. Today we're going to review Definity or the Internet Computer ICP token. So this is the top-down view of the entire project. Um, my ultimate conclusion is I think that it will not perform price-wise against um, other cryptos. Doesn't mean it could it could still have good price performance, but I think compared comparatively speaking, um, I think that there's better uh, price appreciation elsewhere. So what does this project do? Uh, let's get into it. Um, it, it objective is to cut costs for cloud-based business applications. So it's like an internet computer, and it does autonomous software, open. Uh, internet services that guarantee that APIs operate in perpetuity without platform uh, dependency risk. So this is a very important thing to have because um, I could even say that, like for instance, my YouTube channel, etc., or my media content is at risk from the platform that I build. My, if I was to build a business and I build it on top of a platform, this it has platform risk. And so many uh, companies that build on the web have to depend on big tech and they, bu they build on top of big tech. And if big tech comes in and changes their APIs, that business will collapse completely. And we've seen this happen multiple times where someone builds a business model on top of Facebook or they build it on top of YouTube and YouTube changes the rules underneath the business and that business goes bankrupt. So this is supposed to be a solution to that so that it'll be like an internet where the rules will not change and you could trust them and you could build your strong business models uh, in confidence. So you have a decentralized infrastructure that will self-direct and compete with centralized infrastructure. It will host applications on trusted servers with near zero downtime. Um, you know, one of the risks of that is bad websites can use zero uh, downtime as well. Only way to take down bad websites is to vote on it. Um, so this is impractical right now, and so they need to come up with a solution for if someone starts launching uh, you know, like bad web websites. Either you're going to make it permissionless, which means anyone could put something up, but then that means that bad websites could put their stuff, or you're going to make it permissioned, which means that not any, like then you have a, a barrier to entry. So there's problems with these kind of things, and um, you know, and so that's a something to consider when you're saying something is permissionless and you're making it the internet. So this is a problem that needs to be solved, um, and I'm sure that's you know it's it's. I don't think I think there will be a check a way to create a committee or something that uh, doesn't allow for like tries to create an unbiased committee that has the human values uh, connected to it so that bad websites can't exist. So here's a traditional um, web internet protocol. So you, you what you basically have is a bunch of computers that are connected or networks that are connected, and it's a combination of many networks controlled by a common protocol. Uh, you have platform risks, which is a ser uh, provider service provider risk. For instance, uh, the CEO of this project gave an example. Zinger um, Game had $10 billion evaluation, and Facebook suddenly changed the rules. They changed their APIs, and it lost 85% of its value nearly instantly. LinkedIn APIs changed, and many businesses uh, lost their business because of that. So building a service provider is like building on sand. That's what he was saying, and I have to have to agree with him. You have to think about the base layer of where you're building your business, um, because that could, if that disappears, you're you could do all this hard work, right? You can do all this hard work building a huge business, you know, and it takes years and years and years, and then they change the rules and your business collapses, and all your effort was wasted. And you lose all that money. So you, if you're going to build a business, if you're going to put in the work to to make a, a business. You have to know what you're building it on top of is going to be dependable, and that's you know, like I said, that's what this um, project is is aiming to offer. Um, and and it also says big centralized attack points on the traditional web. It's quasi national because there's only like five big major tech companies, and they're heavily regulated. So they're you know, it's quasi uh, the, the internet is quasi national now. The internet computer um, basically is d the same thing, a web of data centers, uh, which are protocol run, and it upgrades through governance, like the token that we're talking about, the ICP token, is a governance token. It provides guarantees, um, 
you know, for entrepreneurs and users, free and open internet, um, which means it goes along with that permission list. And so you could, yes, you could have bad websites and we, they have to think of a solution for that. An intercommunication of apps is in, in, in a, you know, services manner, you know, like the apps communicating together. So another way to visualize this is the internet computer is created by ICP Crota. It's, um, it weaves together computer capacity, special machines operated by independent data centers. So that's like people, individual people with the ICP token around the world. This creates a virtual unified public compute platform in cyberspace, advanced computer science and ICP protocol math makes it tamper proof and unsolvable. So basically you have um, data centers, the internet, the ICP protocol, and the, and here's the internet. So, um, you know, this would be uh, the computers and this would be the protocol itself that manages them. And, you know, this is the data centers that host, uh, you know, data. So you would have uh, a memory unit is, you know, through WebAssembly, it's tamper-proof, um, service is consistent, uh, the browser sees it just like the regular web, and computation is paid for with the ICP token. So that's where the token gets some of its value. ICP tokens can be converted into cycles. So basically, uh, you have the ICP protocol, which pays data centers, which are, you know, independent operators, and the data centers sell their ICP um, at a financial exchange, and an operator, people who have apps, ends up buying ICP, and the operator converts the ICP into cycles, which is computation on the computer, and it, uh, it you know, charges its uh, web services and burns the ICP token. So the more useful that this computer is, the more ICP uh, tokens that will be burned. So the more applications that go on the ICP uh, computer, um, the more valuable the token. So reliable infrastructure for any, any web application. That's, you know, that's what their model is. And, and th interestingly enough, it will be a better internet according to them because you don't have to worry about all these specific things like data systems, file systems, firewalls, web servers, DNS services, antivirus, CDNs, VPNs, etc. Um, and the risk for entrepreneurs, as I showed you, just to reiterate, all these companies are a risk vector. If you build your business on any one of these companies, that is a single point of failure. And so they're trying to get rid of that kind of weakness in the web. Okay, so we'll get into this project right now. Like, we'll go through the uh, extensive review. So as far as price, I actually don't expect it to perform against um, uh, other cryptos, right? Um, and the reason why is it's not a low market cap. And the CEO, you know, like his accomplishment record isn't like, um, you know, like he, he, he wasn't like, you know, he's no Alex Mashinsky, you know, like he's not, a, he hasn't made several billion dollar startups, etc. cetera. Um, but he is well connected, but we'll get into that. Um, and it's not early. You're not, you know, you're not early with this one. Uh, it's social media uh, is is out there, and um, it, but it does have a live niche. Okay, so that is a good thing. Uh, but it's it, it's not early, right? So those are some of the key things that these are some of the key things that show if a project is good, and it's none of those things, right? Um, future increase in demand for the token compared to other cryptos, I don't think it's going to be that good. Future market excitement, um, well, they just had mainnet release, so that would be an exciting moment for most projects, but, you know, we'll see what kind of things are on the roadmap to create excitement. Current awareness is no, it definitely not. Um, all the social media stuff is, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not, it's, it's a popular project in terms of social media. Before first marketing campaign, no, it's, it's a well-known project once again. So major upcoming events, I mean, they just had their mainnet launch, um, and, you know, it's going to be a fast-evolving project. They say they're 10 years focused, bigger than the world finance. They want to be bigger than world finance uh, in less than 10 years. You know, I think that, I definitely think that all the world finance will be on cryptocurrency within the next decade. So that's why I say to uh, normal investors, just buy an index, you know, if, if, you're, if you're not in, in the crypto, just buy the index. But um, regarding this, you know, like, yeah, it'll probably have a good schedule of activities. Money needed to move. The price up decreases. Um, not, you know, once again, this is compared to other cryptos. I don't think it will be that well. Token sell side to decrease. Okay. So one of the, let's get into why I think that this is not going to perform well. And it, it's actually kind of irritates me. 
This project has a philosophy of equal access to anyone, but its its token launch was awful. Um, it is basically funded by VC venture capital, and they have like um, they have five thousand x returns. They're sitting on like this thing just started trading, and it has five thousand x returns. So basically, I will nickname this token "Whale Dump on You uh, Project." This is I will dump on you project whales dump on retail. That's what this project is. Um, you know, it, it it was funded by VCs and they have five thousand to three thousand and 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 even in their last seed round they raised forty x. They're still up forty x. So no, thank you. I don't want to have um, this thing. Um, like I don't want to give a bunch of rich people my money. They should have started off for anyone. They should have allowed for it to trade earlier um, on all these exchanges, etc. And you notice this thing came out of nowhere and threw its its token on all the major exchanges. So it was obviously doing backdoor deals because it's kind of well connected to all the whales. Um, and so it immediately was thrown across all the exchanges. So basically, it's whale dumps on retail. That's what I would nickname this, this project. Um, as far as its um, market cap, um, it's 16 billion, huge market cap, uh, fully diluted is 63 billion. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it came out of the gate at, at launch, uh, with an evaluation higher than, you know, like, um, basically every project just about, you know, besides like only a few of them uh, above it. So it's like one of those top 10 projects, right? But, it, you know, there's no one building on it yet because it, it's, um, you know, obviously, there's a few things here and there, but it, it in order to have your ecosystem, you need to be live for a while. So to come out of the gate with that kind of evaluation is kind of ridiculous. Also, you know, like just just that that it puts a bad taste in my mouth. The um, giving rich people these kind of returns, five thousand, three thousand, you know, x returns um, with its current price. Yeah, I think I'll sit on the sideline for a while. Um, token to uh, the supply distribution, it is awfully distributed. Once again, whales own a majority of the tokens, and they're going to probably dump over on you in the coming days. Okay, so that being said, um, we'll get into some of the positive things. Um, I do like the token model if they had, you know, a fair release, uh, but they didn't. Um, and, you know, they have it's kind of like a dividend token because it has fees that burn the tokens, which I do like. Um, fees that burn the tokens are a dividend to investors. They kind of service that way. All right, as far as inflation goes, once again, the whales hold a huge amount of it, um, but the inflation will be start um, sh being good in the future. Uh, and, and in the end of my review, I'll say, like, I'm not, su you know, in the long run, I do think you can make money from this, but in the short run, I wouldn't want to touch it. So in year one and year two, the inflation goes from, in year one, it's 10%. In year two, it's 7.5%. And then after that, it slowly approaches 5% onwards. You know, um, it just, it slowly slopes to about 5% um, when it, reaching that 5% around year seven. So the inflation is pretty low. Um, my goal is to let this thing have time to trade. Um, you know, so once we got to give those whales time to exit, um, you know, their 3,000x returns. Um, that they got from being VC funders. So um, I would sit on the side and let those whales get out. As far as niche serving a market now, it is servicing a market now. Um, the niche um, is basically that it's it's launched. It's mainnet has launched. Okay, and so um, the token used for services and governance, absolutely. I really like the token model. Uh, you must hold and pay to use for gas. It aims for 90% locked. It converts into cycles and burns. So any computation that's done on the system uh, uses up those ICP tokens. It burns them. So the more activity on this, uh, the better the token price would perform theoretically. ICP stake governance equals voting neurons. And uh, basically what neurons are is just like uh, they're the voting entities. As far as the value of the target market, um, it's a $400 trillion market, um, internet services, identity management, DeFi, and finance, etc. So it's, you know, it's about as big as a market as you can get. So that's good from a, an investment standpoint. So 
like to get into terms so you know what neurons are because uh, neurons are created as a governance mechanism. They exert the will of the community um, and their savings accounts with notice and withdrawals are given. Voting power proportional to stake ICP can vote on other neurons by liquid democracy. So remember Fala token, uh, they have something like the Fala token where you could vote on an individual and give them your weight in vote, which I actually think is the best type of democracy that there is. That's one of the reasons I say I like this token model. Incentives exist to in incentivize voting for driving value to the internet computer over the long term. So you could just delegate your votes through proxy and have um, you can give that to anyone. So if there's someone in the community that you think is smart, you can just delegate your votes to them and uh, not worry about governance in the future. And then that person you, that you trust will probably do the same. All right, so let's get into the CEO. So the CEO is uh, Dominic Williams, founder, chief scientist, uh, block, blockchain theoretician. So, you know, he's this computer scientist guy. Um, he created a game in the past with, you know, 2.5 million users. And he's a, this is his meta billion. This is his first billion dollar startup, it appears, from digging through his history. So I, I usually like projects where, they, where the founder has already made a billion dollar company. Um, but, you know, he made this one so that he is has that achievement um, uh, achievement unlock of making a billion dollar startup which is something i consider very valuable um as far as what i give the ceo rank i'd say he's a seven um and the reason why i'd say that is because the launch was inconsistent with the vision you you basically gave vcs all the um the prosperity of this project and that doesn't even fit the vision of the project which is open and permissionless access well this wasn't really open permissionless was it because you went to a bunch of rich people and allowed for them to uh buy the tokens on like on the on the cheap and now um those vc funders who are well connected and, and allowed your token to get all over the place are going to dump on retail who didn't have the same opportunity look i would love to invest it in this early so you know, but I guess I, I'm not allowed to access it. So it's I guess that permissionless idea of this doesn't really work out, does it? Um, it's very inconsistent with its message in the way it started. And if you're going to start off the wrong way, how can we trust that this project really is um, permissionless and equal access for all? If you want to make an equal access for all internet, I think it would have been a good idea to start off funding that way, don't you think? Um, but he is well connected and... Um, it's a, a strong computing um, platform. You know, he's, he's got a lot of computing uh, background, which is, you know, a smart guy. I think he is a smart guy. I just don't know. Like, it must be that he, you know, he must have been just well connected and decided to go with the elite strategy. Okay, so um, as far as evidence of ability to solve difficult problems, the team is very, um, uh, they have a massive team of very talented engineers. So I know that they'll be able to do anything that they want to accomplish. And that's what funding does. You know, money does that. But I would imagine these people are going to be employees rather than passionate visionaries, you know, considering that this project made all its money from VCs. Okay, so um, government aimed at capturing value for token holders. Well, um, so I really like the governance model of this project. You know, it, like every, I like everything about this project except for the way it, its funding started off, which is completely ancillary to its mission. But let me, that, I digress. The um, I really like that they have added voter weight for time lockup tokens. You know, like so basically those who have a time commitment, a long term vision. You know, they 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 are long term vision oriented, and I'll get into why. Like I do think this will be a strong uh, project in the future, despite of its its faulty start starting. It's because it actually has some good governance principles, um, which is you know it's super rare to see a project give weight to individuals who lock up their tokens for time. What that does is that creates a long time horizon for um, for thinking. Like basically what I'm saying here is if you lock up your tokens for longer periods of time, you get a heavier weight in governance. That makes the project more long-term in its time horizon. So that's what that is. And that's, that's something you want to see in governance. So the uh, max rewards, you know, uh, for basically for participating, um, you get, you know, rewards in governance. And it's, you know, the network nervous system. And, you know, right now I'd say the token is pretty centralized amongst the VCs who hold it. But there are token governance. Uh, anyone could participate, adapt and evolve and runs um, without risk of downtime. 
high value people prior to his upgrades. I do think that high value people will be controlling this thing in the future. It is well funded, so um, developers will be well compensated for working on this. Um, also, token demand is going to come from governor uh, from developers. Um, and I don't see that being a strong force anytime soon. So the only way this token is going to have demand is from developers and from builders. And I don't think that's going to be the case, at least for the short term, like the, you know, the one, two, three years. So from the investment side, you're probably looking for better investments, comparatively speaking. You know, this project could definitely grow in that time, but I don't think it will have the price appreciation in that time. Um, but, you know, because it's like there's going to be – this is comparatively speaking. Now, remember, I could be totally wrong. None of this is investment advice. I could totally be wrong. I have been wrong before. Team has majority control through the token. I actually like those kind of things where the team has majority control. That's always a good thing because it shows that they want to think long-term. And the team is long-term oriented. I will say that. Um, you know, their mission statement is, is talks about their mission and all of that like the impact, positive impact on the world. So evidence that the management is trustworthy. Well, one of the things that'll do that is strategic partnerships and backers. You have Andries and Horzowitz, which is a venture capital. And hey, these are the VC guys that hold all the tokens and are gonna dump on the retail, right? They're gonna be the ones to dump their 5,000 X returns on you. So be careful of that. Um, oh, like Polychain Capital, Olaf uh, Carlson Wee, which is a CEO, first Coinbase employee, over a billion dollars in funds, and they raised two hundred million in funding. Where they got those tokens super cheap? Hey, we're at like a seventy billion dollar market cap, right? And they, these guys gave them two hundred billion. You know, so you know, two hundred times five equals one billion times seventy, right? So you know, they're crazy high valuations that they um, got those tokens. Okay. I know I've said that a lot. It irritates the hell, the the heck out of me that they uh, that they started that way. They should have been open to anyone. I believe in permissionless. I believe anyone should have access. I, I don't like this Wall Street garbage where you, where you have a walled garden, you know. And to start off that way makes me sick. Okay, but um, the um, as far as the team's trustworthiness, you know, they they all they all see, are trustworthy, you know, so to speak. But I would say that the biggest risk with the team is the launch was not consistent with their with their open opportunity for all values. So that means there's some inconsistency there. Um, high value upgrades, I do expect that to be the case. Um, oh man, let me shut off my phone here. Okay, so value of services provided to increase, I expect that to be the case. Large business models demand a token to reflect their needs. This is designed so that large businesses will buy the token in the future, and I expect that to be part of the main design. That is part of the main design, um, that businesses will demand the token because of the, the way their token model works. As far as marketing goes, um, you know, it's not something to be concerned. They have a huge budget for it, the well-connected, and they will have a huge budget for all that stuff. Um, Difficulty of internal transfer. Basically, these things are just saying that developers will come on board because they have easy development tools and it's easier to port their business models to uh, this computer, As uh, especially comparatively speaking with those business models. Um, they could trust it. So more people using the project tokens per person to go down. Um, all of this is irrelevant. It's just exchanges. It's easy to acquire anywhere. Project is super easy to use. That is the case. Um, you know, I'm just like trying to fly through it. Um, external transfer, catalyst inhibitor. Basically, who will stay once, like how hard will it be for people to stay? Well, in reality, like if this thing is so easy for people to transfer their businesses over, if someone makes a computer like this um, that is easy to transfer over from this computer, then theoretically – It'll be just as easy for people to jump onto this platform as it is for them to exit. So that they, they, they will have diff they will have extremely low margins. And so, actually, from a business standpoint, that actually makes this less appealing as well. Best option of the competition, um, I, Polkadot launched with access to all, and I'm just bringing up Polkadot because it is similar. Definity, Definity launched states you are not a venture capital, so you will not. Uh, have access, we will dump on you. This launch makes me sick to my stomach. Yes, I've already said that. Um, as far as Polkadot and Internet Computer go, so they're both permissionless, so to speak. They both have governance and they both have heavy VC funding. Um, Polkadot is, was open source. This one started off closed source, but they are now open source, so that's actually good. Blockchain developer, 
Um, this is aimed at regular developers, so actually that's a better thing for this protocol in versus Polkadot. Blockchain focused, this is more general. Both are complicated, so that's negative for both. Uh, blockchain has, uh, I mean, Polkadot has about 23 members making most of the decisions. Governance for this. This is representative. Polkadot is representative. And I actually think that's fine because there's some people you want to make specific decisions that, you know, like uh, anyone can be voted for, anyone can be removed. So that's, you know, governance makes it to where the users are running it, this one. Um, you know, but it, right now it's just VCs who are holding it all. Um, this is representative. This is direct voting. Polkadot is users pay. This one is developers pay. So this one runs without fees. Polkadot run. I mean, the fees are for the developers or for the application runners. Um, this one encourages um, validators to use web services. I mean, that's not the biggest issue because you, you can run the validators on your own uh, computer. But I would heavily discourage Polkadot from encouraging validators to run on web service providers because that does centralize um, it amongst the, the big web uh, developers. And this one does not encourage that. Uh, the internet computer. But they became open source, so that's good that they did that. Okay, so I think I got all of it, so I can get into the summary. Okay, so finally, the summary, my, um, if this thing could load up, my summary of what I think regarding price informants. So I think I'm going to learn a lot from this, so I can't be super confident about what I think its future is. I know that it's heavily centralized amongst VC, and we'll see if that strategy works. We're, I, this project will teach me whether going to VC instead of retail for money is a good strategy. I mean, after all, it got them listed on all these exchanges, and it's well-connected, so it was promoted in key locations. You know, the, the thing with getting VC funding is v, VC is more strategic, and they're more strategic with businesses, so there is that advantage. But at the same time, there's very few token holders um, with this project, and I'll even point out here – I could not find the data for how many token holders there are and accounts so that I can't see the focus of, of wealth amongst account holders like I can with other blockchains. So that it's probably super centralized, but I couldn't find that data. And I even mentioned it in the telegram and I got no response, you know, and I don't have all the time in the world to try to find these things. So um, I couldn't find that data. So that's not a good sign as well. So as far as allocation, I didn't buy any. Um, I'm going to wait. I think that this one's performance is going to be in the future. I do think that it will be a, a player in the future. It is a powerful technology. I really like everything about it except for how it launched. But I think that um, this is, you know, in the time horizon, I think it's pr its strongest price performance, comparatively speaking to other cryptos, is probably two years out. Um, 18 months to two years out, maybe further, maybe less. But that's where I think it is. I think it's going to underperform cryptos in general because you have these people with these massive returns and they need to like you need to they needs to trade this token needs to trade for a while um you know and it needs to see if it'll go like super low so that those people with 5000 x returns get out um you know and, and but we'll see if they do or whatever but i think the most important thing with this one is give it time just give it time and be patient. Um, there's plenty of other good projects where the ROI opportunity is bigger. Um, and I and this remember, this is just my opinion. I could be wrong, but I don't think it's going to perform against the average crypto as well. The pros, it's good technology, good governance model, well-connected, deep pockets, easy for developers to use, and large target market, like that multi, that $400 trillion market. The cons, closed early processes for tra uh, funding and protocol is not permissionless fashion, in at least in the beginning, which leads to rich with massive bags to dump on you. You know that once again that five thousand x or more. Um, the early stages. So uh, yeah, it's in the early stages. So the early so adoption will likely be slow at first, which is a so which is the source of token demand. So not only do you have these people with five thousand x returns, but you also have. Um, Slow adoption, you know, this thing just launched. So it's going to be in the beginning at least before it can ever get a network effect. Um, ad adoption is going to be where the demand of the token has. So not only do you have bad dem demand in the future, but you also have an incentive to sell. So I think it's going to go down a lot. Uh, that's just what the signs are telling me. Extreme price risk with a high cap, rich VCs, you know, um, exclusionary launch, rich get all the opportunity. Um, you decrease developer incentives because you know why would you jump on this if um you you know like the only reason you as a developer i would jump on this is if i was getting paid um so you're basically an employee rather than a self-directed entrepreneur you know um because like uh you know like 
you, you're not going to be able to buy this token and participate in the network super on, you know, early on. So it, was, it seems like a massive uh, cash grab to me, horrible launch. Um, you know, team, early VCs will have all the power, and they do. They have all, most of the tokens. So the VCs and the team are in control of this right now um, because they're the only ones who are really – you know, will, willing to stake those tokens in the long term because they're the ones who got it for, you know, right here with this time value, like how um, time weight is given. The only people who are willing to do that are the people that got the tokens practically for free. So it's going to be run by the VCs and run by the team. Um, but besides that, I do think it is a powerful technology. It actually has good get governance. Um, I'd much rather go with something like Polkadot. Um, but I do think I will be looking at this. I will be watching this and, you know, like as time goes on, I may be interested in investing if it proves that it has price support. Hey, if those VCs don't end up dumping, um, you know, a year from now, I might actually start buying it even if they do have 5,000 X returns, you know, like if, if they're, if they're just not dumping the tokens, you know, but we'll see how that turns out. Um, and so, you know, I'll just put it on my radar. So that's a, a summary of this project guys. Um, Please let me know what I got wrong, what I got right. Um, if you like this kind of content, uh, feel free to join my Patreon where I give this content early access, sometimes a week ahead of time for micro caps, so that can be advantageous. Um, so that is all. Um, once again, I look forward to producing the highest quality content for you guys in the future, and uh, I'll see you guys soon.